Electro transport chain occurs in the mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell, composed by an outer membrane and an inner membrane. Inside this, there is a space, inside this purple line called the matrix. The outer mitochondrial membrane is porous and is permeable to small molecules. The inner membrane, on the other hand, is composed by a phospholipid bilayer, which makes it impermeable to small molecules and ions, including protons. This creates a space between the two, called the intermembrane space. Within the inner membrane, there is a matrix with few protons. There is a high proton concentration in the intermembrane space, giving it a low pH, as opposed to the matrix, which has a low proton concentration. This difference in concentration of protons is created by the electron transport chain. This gradient provides electrochemical potential, which ultimately provides the energy needed by the ATP synthase for the phosphorylation of ADP, a process which is highly thermodynamically unfavorable. In the inner mitochondrial membrane, we have the electron transport chain. We have complex 1, which is the NADH hydrogenase. We have complex 2, called succinate dehydrogenase. Complex 3, which is cytochrome C oxidoreductase. And complex 4, cytochrome C oxidase. There are five electron carriers used in this electron transport chain. NADH can carry two electrons at a time. Flavoproteins can carry one to two electrons at a time. Whereas iron sulfur proteins can only carry one at a time. Finally, we have the mobile electron carriers, ubiquinone, which can carry two electrons at a time. It has three forms. The fully oxidized form has no electrons, the intermediate has one, and the fully reduced one ubiquinol has two. It can collect electrons from complex one and two and bring them to complex three. Cytochrome C can carry one electron from complex three to complex four. And now, magic. NADH will become oxidized into NAD+, FMN will take its two electrons. Then the iron sulfur center will bring the electrons to Q one at a time. From the matrix, two protons will join Q forming QH2 and four protons will be pumped out. Complex 2 or succinate dehydrogenase is an enzyme from the Krebs cycle. Succinate will bind to a binding site and will be transformed into fumarate. Two electrons will be passed to FAD. The iron surface center will pass two electrons to Q one at a time, forming QH2. This, this time, time, no, no electrons, electrons will be pumped out. QH2, coming from complex 1 or 2, will go to the binding site of complex 3, also called cytochrome C oxidoreductase. It will donate its two electrons, one each, to cytochrome C. Q goes back to its fully oxidized version. Two protons will be used in this process, and four protons will be pumped out into the intermembrane space. The two mobile cytochrome Cs will bind to complex four cytochrome C oxidase, and the oxygen will attract the two electrons along with two protons to reduce oxygen to H2O. From the matrix, two protons will be pumped out into the intermembrane space. So in this video, we have used two cytochrome C. In this way, we have only used half an oxygen, which with two protons and two electrons yields one water molecule. Remember that from one QH2, you get two reduced cytochrome Cs. But in reality, to get a full oxygen molecule, you need two QH2s and four reduced cytochrome Cs. Therefore, with the use of four protons and four electrons, you will get two water molecules. When electrons enter the electron transfer chain through complex one, a proton pump using NADH, four protons are pumped out. Complex three pumps out four protons and complex four pumps out two. This gives a final balance of 10 protons, which in the inner membrane space can be used to make 2.5 ATPs. When electrons enter through complex 2, where FADH2 is used, no protons will be pumped out. Complex 3 pumps 4 protons out, and complex 4 pumps 2 out for an overall balance of 6, which can be used to generate 1.5 ATPs.